So yeah, it is very, uh, very wet out here. This mini's leg is just almost curling back up into a J. Hey, yeah, he's, he's 18 plus. You can't even walk. I think she is pregnant, Corey. Yeah, I mean, I'm feeling the bones. Holy cow. She is only about a year and a half old. We're getting ready to go up to quarantine. It's the big day for all the ones from the last auction to come out of quarantine. So Corey and I are gonna go up there and we're gonna booster everybody's vaccines, do deworming, just make sure everyone's looking good and healthy and then they get to come out. So we made some labels for our squeeze chute. More people can operate it. So I'm not the only one up here that knows how. The info from the ones that we're taking out of quarantine, putting down their previous weights, because we're going to weight check them today. So this is Bia. This is the one that you guys saw at the last auction intake, has heaves really bad. Um, she was doing pretty good for a while. We've had her um, in a dry lot, getting fed twice a day with soaked feed, as well as soaked hay, so that way she's not having any of that dust or anything. Um, but when we were having those crazy weather changes last week, she had a pretty bad relapse, and we had to start her back on steroids. Um, so we're just kind of taking a look at her today. When Doc comes back out, he's going to look at her again. Um, he's already looked at her a few times, so we just have him keep checking her every week. So as of right now, I'm not sure what her future is going to hold, especially since she did have such a bad relapse, and we just want to make sure we're doing what's best for her. So we're moving some horses around. We got these guys last week in a covert rescue. So we're gonna put them out of the way so we can get the rest of the horses that are going down to the main part of uh, Horse Plus. So we can just kind of separate them, you know, get mixed in together. And it just makes our job a little easier. So this is Marshmallow. Um, he's one of our donkeys. He was castrated a few weeks ago. Um, so today we're just gonna be doing vaccinations and deworming and just kind of giving him a once over where he gets to come out of quarantine. Um, so nothing's wrong with Marshmallow, just all the boys that were castrated, um, they're just kind of swollen down there, which when we came out here at first, some of them were just laying down relaxing. I'm talking with Doc to make sure that we can just give an anti-inflammatory to help bring some of that swelling down. All right, so Doc gave us the go ahead to give some banamine. Um, with a lot of these guys, anytime we're doing medication, I'm just making sure to be in contact with Doc the whole time, um, and he's letting me know what I can give and how much. So when he came in, he put on three, or he was 326 pounds, and now he's 350. Um, but he wasn't one that was really underweight, so it's just good to see with extra nutrition, he's just kind of flourishing a lot more. Um, so it's 103.2, which their temperatures can raise when they're kind of worked up. So he's getting the anti-inflammatory, which can also reduce temperature. He's not showing any signs of like any respiratory. Um, so when we'll take him down, we'll probably cold hose him back there where you had the castration. And then since he's got the microchip where I can check the temp, once we get him settled in a stall after a little while, we'll go in and recheck his temperature. Um, mucous membranes are nice and pink. They're moist, so he's not dehydrated at all or anything. Um, not showing any signs of like the nasal discharge that he was having when he first came in and everything. So we're just gonna do double checks and make sure everything's good before we give him any vaccinations. So this is Betty. This is the one that a lot of you guys saw in our daily pictures and um, that had the super long hooves that our farrier took care of. When we first got her, she's not halter trained at all. So but she's getting better, the more treats we give her. We come up here a lot um, and we feed and just kind of give them treats to get them used to us. So Breeze has officially gained 101 pounds while in quarantine. She's looking great. Um, she is a more petite breed anyway, so I'm not really thinking that we're gonna see too much more weight put on her. Um, but her body condition score looks great. She's right where we want her to be. And so she's gonna, once she gets out of here, she's gonna go down to the pasture and make some new friends. Yeah, but I'm just trying to see if it's like a, a mass or 
I know. Um, so he has a swelling on his prepuce, and so um, once Doc's gonna be out here, we're gonna have him take a look and kind of examine and get us a treatment plan on how to make him more comfortable. He doesn't seem like he's having any issues with it. It really wasn't that painful for me to touch or anything, but we'll make sure Doc takes a look at it so that way he can let us know how to fix it. You did it. So Mr. here, he has gained 90 pounds. He is also gonna be going down and getting on multiple times a day feedings just so we can get him up to the full body condition score. But I am really happy to see that he has been gaining this whole time and hasn't backslid at all. And so we're just gonna give him another round of long acting antibiotic. He's just starting to show signs of possibly um, a cold. And with the moving down to new pasture and everything, the stress on them can kind of make that worse. So we're just kind of getting ahead of any infection that possibly um, might have resurfaced or anything like that. So we just got done with the outtake for the horses that we got last month during quarantine, or actually last month last and this month. Last month and this month. <laughs> yeah, so we we've did a little bit different this time. Uh, we went to a couple covert auctions so we can get more horses. Because the January auction we went to was just terrible. The, you know, the kill buyers are just outbidding us on everything. So we actually have 10 horses going down into the main area of Horse Plus today. Um, Jenny, you want to talk a little bit more about what we're dealing with? Yeah, so um, we have our healthiest group is the ones that we had like the mules in um, and the saddle bread. They're gonna go out in a pasture together. And then um, the three, the two donkeys and the one mule that was just castrated, he's gonna go, they're gonna go in the stalls for a couple of days. So just the big thing, a lot of these guys come out of um, the pastures, they're in a new environment, they're in a new pasture, there's new horses next to them. They can get stressed out, they can lose weight easy after we move them or not really gain. Um, so the ones that really we want to focus on, they'll go in our stall that I'll be feeding them um, all their meals every day, doing medications and supplements and everything. And we're just getting ready for the auction coming up tomorrow and the intake on uh, Wednesday, yeah. Yeah, the keys for Big Red ended up missing. Uh, I used Big Red on Thursday to get some horses up to quarantine so we could use our squeeze chute. I could have sworn I put them back on the hook, so I got to try to find those, especially since we do have an auction tomorrow, so we kind of need them. So I was retracing my steps to figure out where the keys for Big Red could have gone. Little brother Keaton called me and told me he found the keys on top of the shavings pile. So we have the keys, we're ready to go for the auction tomorrow, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty relieved. All right, so this is Spruce. Um, Spruce is pretty unhandled, but he's getting a lot better, but um, the other day he had an adverse reaction to anesthesia and he hit his eye. Um, and with eyes, they need medication multiple times a day. With, his, with him not really being handled, we decided to take him to the Tennessee Equine, and he actually has a catheter um, through his eyelid to deliver the medication. So, which is really nice, because then we can just push medications through a line that's braided into his mane, and then we're able to do the medications um, two or three times a day, just depending on what he needs. Um, so, for his medications right now, at first he was on pain meds, anti-inflammatories, um, right now he's on two different antibiotics and then we actually made serum from his own blood um, which we put in the eye and with it being from him and his own blood it actually helps heal any ulcers in his eye and that mask on him is just so he can't rub his catheter out of his eye it just kind of has a kind of a dome over one side and there's gauze on the inside to help soak up any pus or blood that may be coming out of there Right now we have a shelter transfer here. They're from an organization called Kindred Hope and they're looking at Honor to help with their um, program that helps veterans who are dealing with PTSD. So this is Cricket. She's, she was an owner surrender, I think. 
She's been here a couple months. That's why I asked about your quarantine facility because if you're with shelter transfers, you can take horses from quarantine also. Right. Um, but if you're not set up for that right now. Yeah, with our <laughs> fence down from our septic tank being okay. put in and everything, we're still yeah. a little, we're short. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> And that's what a lot of them want to do is brush them and talk to them and it just calms them down. Yeah. Well, do y'all want to make a decision today or come back maybe? Well, we'll have to come back because we didn't bring a trailer today. Well, you can still adopt and then come back <laughs> to pick them up. So I think you want to take them both? I think so. Yay! All right. Yeah. Well, we came up here not expecting to adopt today, and we're going to end up coming back tomorrow to pick up two. They're going to go to Skyline, Alabama, and they are going to be part of our uh, program at Kindred Hope Rescue and Sanctuary. And we invite veterans, first responders um, to come out and interact with our horses, whether that's riding, just spending time with them, brushing them, whatever um, helps them. We let them decide what they want to do, um, and it helps with their PTSD symptoms. We didn't, we didn't intend to adopt today. We came without a trailer and now we're going home with two. So. <laughs> so these are all the horses that we needed to put in stalls. So we trailered them down. The first one here is Bo. And then we got the three donkeys that were just gelded. We're gonna stick them in individual stalls. So. Next week when Doc is out here, I think actually later this week, we're gonna get them trimmed. So we're gonna have to get them put into a chute, get them sedated and lay them down in order to do it because they're all a little unhandled. We are giving these guys exceed the ones that came in from our covert auction last week. Exceed, you need to give in two doses. Uh, you typically want to give the second one about four days after the first dose. I'm about to look it up by her name tag, so great reason why we use our tags and their main is these two look identical other than size. So I'm gonna look her up by her number. So this is Nutmeg, this is our older one. Unfortunately, this is what happens when people breed and they don't do any training with their babies. Then you have a large animal who's scared of a lot and not really handled. So we have Doc coming out today. We have a couple of mares to preg check that we got from our covert auction rescue. And then we have a miniature meal that has a growth underneath one of its eyes. So we're gonna get that checked out to see exactly what it is. And it looks like Doc is pulling up right now. So we're gonna go get started. So we're gonna see what this mass is on the side of its head. He's got a little infection going on, a seroma is if I get hit there and I damage the blood vessel, you know, it, you get a bruise. Yeah. But if it's less than a bruise where the serum comes out. Kind of like a blood blister? Yes. Okay. We get it to drain, we should be in pretty good shape. Okay. It was strangely gratifying. <laughs> you wanna, you don't wanna stitch that up because there's infection or stuff in there. You wanna get all that out. So what you wanna do is flush it with hydroperoxide or chlorhexidine every day once a day keep it open just sort of let it heal from the inside out i think she is pregnant corey you know i was looking at her and i could have sworn she was man several months along should we check that younger one too they came together yeah i mean i'm feeling the bones holy cow yeah and i don't i don't know if i can it's so far up in there i can't I can't get the probe up in there, but I feel a baby. 
I was looking at her earlier and she just looked way too big for, you know, her age. And it looked like there was probably a baby in there. We had Doc come out and he just confirmed that she is several months pregnant. So she will probably be foaling within, what do you say, Doc, next four or five months? Yes, next probably four, four months. Next four months, we'll probably have a little baby running around from an unhandled horse. It is pretty sad because she is only about a year and a half old. We're gonna need to have a Jess Jason ward up here. Yeah, we will. Well, we can't get that vet barn done soon enough. So this one, we're just gonna keep an eye on for a little bit to see if she starts showing any signs of being pregnant. And if we see anything, we'll give Doc a call and get him out here and uh, see what's going on. But we know for sure that Nutmeg is pregnant. Today was sort of a light duty today, but we wanted to get some things done because tomorrow's intake and we wouldn't have time to do it. So let's see, what do we do? We drained an abscess on the donkey, which was fulfilling and gratifying for everybody. And uh, we pregnancy checked one really young mare. So anyway, it was a light day, but did what we need to do. So this is Kaya here. This is actually the third time that she's been back here at our shelter. Uh, she's an amazing horse. The only issue that she really has is that she does not get along with other horses very well. Or at least she hasn't found a buddy that she gets along with yet. But she rides real nice. Um, she'd be a great, you know, little kid's trail horse. The only issue is if you got another horse at your house, you got to separate them or try to figure out a way to get them to get along. But she'll be available for adoption probably next week. Comet and Cinnamon were adopted as a shelter transfer a couple days ago, and their adopter is here to pick them up. taking Comet and Cinnamon home today. Originally, I'm from Indiana, but we live in Northeast Alabama now, and uh, we have a nonprofit that we actually interact, um, have veterans and first responders come out and interact to lessen their PTSD symptoms. It's called Kindred Hope, and these guys are gonna go help some veterans and first responders. So we just got all of our horses moved out of quarantine to get ready for the auction intake today. Um, I'm gonna actually go start getting everything ready right now. We are all set. Well, Keaton is cleaning up the trailers right now, so once he's done with that, they will be ready to hit the road. We are off to the auction. It is pouring rain. Uh, it was raining a lot worse earlier. Uh, but it's supposed to just rain throughout the day and then get down the 30s tonight. So, um, yeah, I wish I could plan the weather for auction rescues to always be like 70 degrees and sunny, but that's just not the case. And uh, rescue work must go on regardless of the weather. Yeah, it's really wet. It's going to be one wet day, but it's time to go. It is going to be wet this evening, but thankfully it's warm. It's not too terribly cold, so I think it's we're going to make get, it. It's going to get cold, though. Yeah, it's still going to be about freezing. So. Let's go save some horses. Okay, wow, we are... Uh... We were at the auction and got the whole team here, Jason, Keith, and I. Yeah, and a couple of, uh, of our other workers are here, our uh, licensed vet tech. They're both here already, and they're in checking out the horses, sending pictures. And it's just great to have qualified people be able to uh, check the medical conditions of the horses here at the auction. And it's nice to have somebody here who can take a look at it and see from a medical perspective what is actually wrong with the horses, so. Yeah, we'll get in there and uh, find Jenna and and uh, figure out what horses she's seen and get video of that for you guys. And it's raining pretty hard out there, so. Yeah. We rescued this uh, 
old, old gelding, probably 25, 30 years old. We got him before the sale. See, he was in the slaughter price range, and it will save him the stress of going through the ring. And he can just be back here until we're ready to assess him in the morning and haul him back to the shelter. So he's safe, and that's, a, that's always a really good feeling to save a horse's life and know that he's going to be able to get the help that he really needs. So in this pen, we have a lot of pretty underweight horses. It looks like one possibly might have Cushing's, um, just kind of has that hair coat that looks like that, really underweight, really sweet. Um, and then we actually have one that looks like it might be blind in both eyes as well. So in this pen, we have um, an older horse that looks like in a pony, both extremely foundered to the point that on both of them, their front hooves um, are twisting, they're misshapen. And it almost looks like we might have a situation like we had at the last auction with a hook possibly sloughing. This mini's leg is just broken. It's, it's almost, almost curling back up into a J and it's been like that for a while and it is so heart wrenching to see any animal that's gone through this much pain and not, not getting any medical intervention. So this sweet mare is the one um, that we were posting about having the leg flipped under. You can just tell in her face she's in a lot of pain. Um, I mean, she just, it's sad, and it, it's sad that people let these beautiful creatures get to this point. I mean, and she's gone through all of this, and she still will let me touch her. I mean, I don't know how they're that forgiving, but she's absolutely a sweetheart. So it looks like, I don't know if it was barbed wire or what, but she has extremely, like, deep punctures, and it looks like possibly some sort of metal wrapped around her leg. Um, but there's fresh blood, and that's pretty fresh, so on top of having all the issues with the fetlock and everything. Now we have hot issues higher up near the hawk. So here is a draft horse that we were able to get. Um, just upon our first inspection of him, we're seeing that he might have some eye issues. It looks like he might have some opacity in his eyes. Um, we'll have Doc take a look at that just to get a better idea what's going on there. Um, his feet, they'll probably need a farrier. I mean, most of them do, but luckily it doesn't seem like it's too I'm bad, but honestly, it's pretty dark in here and rainy, so it's hard to get a full evaluation. So once we get back to the shelter tomorrow and we get the intake team together, we'll do full evaluations if we need to do radiographs or anything like that. But I'm pretty hopeful about this one. Okay, well, we um, have pretty much gone through all the horses and um, Jason is outside in the car right now trying to get some Wi-Fi in the dry. It's about to do the live stream on Facebook. And yeah, we're gonna head into the auction now. And we've already bought a few. Um, that draft horse that you saw, there's a couple other ones that we've already bought. So we're gonna head in now to the auction and, and see what else we can get in there. So yeah, we'll keep you updated once we get out. As you know, we can't film in there. So, um, so we'll let you know how many we got um, when we come out. It's an exciting night tonight. We rescued 26 horses, mules, donkeys, big ones, little ones. We rescued 26 precious lives from getting shipped to slaughter. And that is a huge number. I'm very excited. It did cost over $11,000 just to purchase them. I mean, honestly, I'm just at awe at our supporters that allowed us to get this many. Um, and just to see them in the condition tonight and know that the medical team and the whole team really is just gonna work their hardest once we get them home. And I just can't wait to see what a lot of these turn into. Yeah, there's definitely some major injuries. What's one of the uh, more major injuries you've seen? And the one of the ones we rescued tonight. Yeah, I think probably the worst I saw um, was a horse which is absolutely severe founder to the point that its hooves were just completely misshapen and it couldn't walk. And then we had another uh, mini pony who had so much neglect and previous injuries, it can't even straighten its leg anymore. So I've been working with Doc this evening as we've been getting them. Um, so we are be gonna be doing pain medications on everyone um, that definitely needs it tonight. And then the team tomorrow morning, they're gonna go ahead and give another dose of pain meds before they hit the road. We're gonna be busy. So we're gonna get the horses settled in, get a few hours of sleep and be right back at it first thing in the morning. Yeah. This is the sorrel gilding. Some eye issues going on on the left side. He's kind of squinting, holding it shut. So we'll stay in it, see if there's any ulcers in it tomorrow. Get him on meds if there is. Um, I think he's got a swollen knee too. So we'll do some radiographs, see if it's arthritis or what's going on with that. We'll see. We'll get Banamine to our worst ones and see how much we got of that. We got Butte as well. 
and bootless. So we're gonna make everybody feel better for the night and then the crew in the morning is gonna make them feel even better tomorrow morning. So this one is the severe, severe founder, flipping up, I mean, absolute, just, I mean, the hooves are, I don't know what they are anymore at this point. So behind me right here is actually where we go. This is where the auction happens. So um, all the chairs up there is where we sit. We usually sit up there in the corner, <laughs> messaging back who we're buying. And um, yeah, this is, the, this is the auction ring right here. So, well, we are done and headed back to the car. A little bit of a limited crew tomorrow, so, and 26 horses. It'll take a little while, but so we'll see you guys in the morning. There was so much rain here last night, there's just mud everywhere. Mud everywhere. Under and over the barn. How's everybody this morning? Doing good. Doing good. How you doing, Tony? Um, I'm still alive. Still alive, okay. This horse is getting uh, some pain management, working with our vet and vet tech. Uh, these are, there's several horses here that need uh, medication before they travel. This horse is extremely foundered. It's just really sad when horses are foundered to this point and they're just suffering. Right now we're just gonna go try to figure out where to do the initial intake. Uh, we've got vet box down here and most of our horses are right about here so all right <sighs> i'm thinking he's bigger than i am and uh unfortunately he is blind in both eyes and that's really sad but it also made it where we were able to rescue him because if he was seeing he probably would have been at least a two thousand dollar horse so well, I'm six foot and uh, jason's six foot and this horse is like you know taller than me yeah so Poor guy, he's, oh, he's got an injury back there. It's really sad. Um, he's having a hard time walking and looks like he has Cushing's and some blindness issues. It's just a really sad case. You know, blind horses get very comfortable and familiar with their, their home, but when they go out away from their home, everything's very scary for them. This horse is completely blind and it's been kind of um, not kicking, just telling the other horses that it doesn't want him anywhere near it. So have to be very uh, gentle and slow with a blind horse because they react and they don't know what they're seeing. I feel like it's probably a recently blind horse. Everything goes in waves. Sometimes there's all foundered horses, sometimes there's all blind horses. Tonight is very much a blind horse. Today is, is very much uh, blind horses. Um, and this mule is very reactive. It's just, it's not thinking, it's kind of acting before it thinks. So that's the most dangerous kind of animal to have is one that reacts before it thinks. It looks like it might have some arthritis going on and kind of stocked up in the back. So you can see this horse's hind leg is just almost as straight as an arrow. And it's not supposed to be that way, so that's very uncomfortable. Um, and also has some issues with its front legs, so. We'll have to see what Doc says, but uh, definitely a sweet old horse. The back foot is really horrific, but the interesting thing is it's actually pretty good looking on the inside. It just sloughs off to the outside. This will be another one that um, we'll probably need to put under and have the feet done. This is just so horrifically sad. And clearly this is an old injury. And you can see from the hoof growth that it's been that way for a long time. And to just leave it in that condition is just horrific. There's really nothing else to say. Like no animal should ever be uh, get neglected to this degree where just deprived of the medical care it needs.
He's a huge horse. Maybe we need to get you out from the camera and put you over there next to him. We're gonna see how, how big he is and get an approximate weight. I don't think he's gonna fit on the scale. Yep, right at the line. And roll on up here. Hey, yeah, he's, he's 18 plus. Talk to him. Hey, bud. So how does this figure out the weight of a horse? I don't know. But oh, it doesn't, it doesn't even reach. It doesn't even reach. We don't know how, how much he would weigh. Yeah. So this poor horse, I insulted it and said it smells bad, but everyone else smelled it and said it smells fine. But um, ever since COVID, I've had the worst, strangest smells ever. So I'm sorry I said you're stinky. So it's got bad front knees. One is worse than the other. And then it can't, when it stands, she has a hard time with the weight on the back leg and it kind of just goes limp back there. We are now down to the last horse getting photos. And uh, then we'll be ready to, uh, to load up. our first trailer heading out and um, they'll be arriving before uh, we do and then um, they should all make it back to the shelter today and hopefully it doesn't rain. I don't think I could do this so I'm gonna go in and see what see if there's any magic in backing up a trailer. I've been doing this since well I started out with a tractor and a hay wagon when I was 14. Okay and I've never done it so. You want to try it? No, I'm good. Are you sure? I'll camera. No, I think oh, okay. I think we better do it. <laughs> Second trailer is loaded up and uh, we're gonna pull it out and bring the next one in. All 26 horses are loaded up and we're done with the assessment here at the auction yard and we're ready to go back to the shelter where the intake team will be waiting for them. It's about a two and a half hour drive and our, our medical team will be ready to uh, accept all these horses and get them everything they need. There's quite a few critical ones. They are in pain management to make their trip more comfortable. It's just, it's always sad when people bring horses like that, you know, in such rough condition to auctions. But we rescued them and we're gonna do the best we can by them. And uh, that's 26 horses saved from shipping to slaughter. And that's, that's a good rescue. Absolutely, oh, absolutely. About half the horses, we rescued about half the horses last night. And that's, that's really awesome. Yeah. No, so so let's awesome. get on the road. I may or may not be part of the auction intake just because my, my uh, lungs have not been doing good and I don't want to push myself but the horses are on, they're ready to go to the shelter and that's, that's exciting. So we are getting ready. We got everything loaded up and we are heading up to quarantine because um, the first trailers will be arriving soon. We are all set up. We got all of our supplies. Um, so we're just gonna head down and um, wait until we know the trailer's a little bit closer and then it'll be go time. Well, we made it back to the shelter and we are unloading the horses. So, um, they're coming up right now. He's, he looks like he's got such severe founder that he's got just a deep rotation and his coffin bone is fixing to come through his hoof. It's not gonna be pretty. He's blind, completely blind, but he seems like a sweet horse. So we're gonna go and pull a Coggins on him. Somebody, hopefully somebody can take care of a blind horse. He, I don't see many, his feet look good, so 
So this horse looks like it may have broken something in its leg up there at one point. Um, it's really sweet horse. I went to go put the halter on and stuck its nose right down in it. But this is the little, little pony out there. Had the, its joints are fused. I always hear humans saying, well, the doctors had to re-break it and do it, but that does not work on horses. The last act of kindness there, we're not hurting anymore. Three-legged horse is not a good thing. Well, we're trimming his feet. We took x-rays of him and everybody was pretty happy because there's no rotation. We didn't see any, and, and we think a good trimming will help him as much as anything. We're gonna pregnancy check her. We're gonna go in there and by hand first. Everybody wants to ultrasound them all the time, but you, you gotta find it by with your hand before you can get an ultrasound. And if it's a real big baby, then doesn't do any good to ultrasound anyway. So what you do is you go in the rectum and you feel down. Oh, she's pregnant. And you bump. If you hit bones oh past the pelvis, then they're pregnant. We got we got a nice little three-year-old donkey. She is she is a nice donkey. She's only three years old. She's about seven months pregnant. We're gonna have to keep a little extra eye on her and uh, start vaccinating her for rhino. Alright, so it looks like a couple horses decided to kick down our fence. He might see a little light in it. Watch that, Leah. No. Nothing's and you can see the redness around the edge. Yeah. yeah, he's blind. Oh yeah, he's looking good. He's just blind in both eyes, but we'll find him a home. I'm six foot three, I got my boots on, so I'm six four right now, and he's almost taller than I am at his withers right here. That's where we measure for him. So yeah, he's a big boy. We noticed last night kind of had a squinting eye at the auction, so we had to sedate him. He's really face shy. Um, but Doc's going to be doing a fluorescein stain to see if we have any ulcers. That way we just kind of know what to medicate him with if he needs it. So he looks like he has a slight abrasion. Um, it's not a big ulcer, but he did have stain uptake in his eye. Um, so we're going to be applying some eye meds to him. Um, he'll probably need those every day. But for the most part, he's pretty good. Um, so we'll see how he does with doing the eye meds. So this next mare is the one that you guys saw last night um, in the pictures that had her back, like fetlock curled under. Um, good news, we don't think it's broke. She actually is bearing weight on it. Um, unfortunately, our x-ray machine died from the cold up here, so we'll have to reevaluate that. Um, but she's got a will to live. Her and one of her friends decided to take down one of our fence panels and run into a 10 acre pasture. And she took off running with a little bit of a limp, but she's got a will to live and she's got a lot of fight. So we're gonna do everything we can for her. And I mean, even if she's a pasture pet, she wants to keep going, we're gonna let her. To me, it felt like home. She got something right above her fetlock or her fetlock. Looks like some swell in there. And she's pretty thin. It's going pretty good. It started off a little slow, but we started getting a, a rhythm going and it just got a little bit quicker there. Um, All together, it's been smooth. But now we got horses turned out there. We got a new gate put on there. Um, we are on our last horse of the night. Get the clear bill of health because we're ready to go home. So 26 horses rescued last night. We just got them all processed. Um, unfortunately, we did have to give the last act of kindness to three of them. Other than that, I'm proud of the crew we had. They hung with us in a not ideal weather situation. Yeah, I mean, honestly, just from being at the auction last night and seeing how bad a lot of these were, um, we got them back here and a lot of them had a lot of life and they were ready to go and putting them out in the pasture and stuff. I'm excited to see the group and be able to bring back 26 and have 23 um, that we get to care for for the next month's awesome. 
And our crew was awesome this morning. We had a lot going on and we pulled through it together. And so I'm happy we're, we're done. We get to go warm up now. Well, we got the 16 footer drum. We're gonna pull some horses out of quarantine today. We found out one of the fillies we got in the covert auction was pregnant and she's only a year and a half old. So we're gonna bring the three of them down here and put them over in our arena pasture for the rest of the time they're here probably. We are running some horses down that the ferry is gonna see today. Um, the only issue is it's a, it's a stubborn mule that if you try to catch it, it likes to run away. And if you do catch it and you're walking it down the alleyway to the barn, it'll drag you down the alleyway. So we're doing the safest thing for us at this point. So we did have one of our animals pass away last night from our February auction rescue. It was a donkey. Um, a lot of the times when we get donkeys from auctions, they come with a sickness and you know, we do everything we can. We have a concoction of antibiotics that we give them, but they don't always make it. It's just one of those things they can seem 100% healthy you know, when we get them in and then they just drop dead overnight. It's unfortunate. You know, but it it does happen when we get these guys from auction. Right now, I think she has got to where she is bucking under saddle. I don't know if maybe she needs to be adjusted. She is in heat. I'm wondering if maybe she's having a bad heat cycle and it's painful for her. Yeah, with a youngster, you're gonna get like more of a clean slate yep. for sure. So um, they're not quite ready to ride yet, but they do need still quite a bit of groundwork too while you're getting them ready. Half Pint was born here. She was born last April, I think. So she's nearly a year old. Um, but yeah, I think her mom was adopted out already. So um, Ember and Duncan actually came from auction together and they're about the same age. So we think they're half siblings, probably have the same dad. Um, you wanted to take them both, you'd have horses that are siblings. <laughs> All right, I will go with Ember and Half Pint. Okay, they're getting um, Ember and Half Pint. Uh, we were picking up horses, uh, picking out some good ones. So we decided on Half Pint and Ember. I loved it. It's a really nice facility. I mean, you guys, your horses are pretty awesome. 